Hey guys, today's video is all about how to use a timing light on an old VW engine. So let me go through the tools you're going to need to hook up a timing light and check the timing on your engine. First of all is what they call a stroboscopic timing light. This is the timing light that you point at the center of the pulley. This is the inductor that picks up the spark on cylinder number one. And these are the positive and negative cables that give the tool power. I'm going to show you how to hook that up in just a minute. The other thing we're going to need to do is loosen our distributor. Now if you've got a typical stock standard distributor, a 10 millimeter socket will do, but with a magnus spark or something like this you're going to need probably a 5 millimeter allen key. So let's get started and show you how to hook this up. So first let's put on the pickup. This always goes on number one cylinder's HT lead. We slide this back here, put the spark plug lead through and slide it shut. And it's important to note that there's always an arrow on it, and this arrow indicates the spark's direction. So this arrow needs to essentially point towards the head and not towards the distributor. So let's go ahead and install this on cylinder number one. And of course, as we know, cylinder number one is on the right hand side, closest to the flywheel. This one back here, they're also numbered as well, which makes it nice and easy. So we take our pickup, we note the direction that it needs to travel, make sure that's facing down towards the head and install. Now sometimes if you're in a combi engine bay you can just hook up the positive and the negative to the battery which is usually off to the one side of the engine. In a Beetle we don't quite get that luxury so it's fairly typical to take our power from the top of the alternator and to ground out and to ground out somewhere close by. So now the tool's got power it can pick up our spark on cylinder number one. Let me take you outside to George and I'll show you how I typically time one of my V-dubs here at home. So now that we're outside working on George, I can go ahead and install the timing light. Once again, just checking that that arrow is facing down towards the head, I can go ahead and install the pickup on cylinder head number one HT lead. And just to show you the different setup, I'm going to install the positive and negative cables for the timing light straight off the battery in the combi engine bay. So I've double checked that I'm sure which ones are positive and which ones are negative, and I'm hooking up the terminals. And as you can see, I've taped up my timing light just so it stays on the whole time. It's just going to make things a bit easier for this video. Now we can turn our focus to the distributor. To adjust the timing on a distributor, you first need to loosen the clamp at the bottom, just enough that we can make adjustments clockwise and anti-clockwise with the distributor. Now this distributor has already been set up and marked in this engine, but if this is a new distributor for your engine, you may not know exactly where to place it when you first want to start the engine up. One thing that can help is lining the pulley up with cylinder number one taking the rotor cap off the distributor so that you can see where the head of the rotor is and what you want to do is try and line that rotor head up as best you can with cylinder number one's HT lead on the distributor rotor cap and that should give you a good starting place for turning the engine over. Now it's time to start the engine up and let it get warm. And as you can see, I've come round now and I'm just making adjustments until the engine is running smoothly. And once I'm happy with where the engine's running, I can leave it there until the engine's nice and warm. And I'm checking to see whether the choke is coming off. Slowly but surely it is, but it's really important to wait until the choke is off and the car's running at its correct idle. Now that the engine is nice and warm, we can go ahead and check the timing. And here at the moment I'm getting about 35 degrees full advance, and then it's falling back and sitting at about 11 degrees. So it's a little bit too advanced, I might try and retard the timing just somewhat.
the engine revved up I've got a total advance of about 32 to 33 degrees and a base timing falling back to about 8 or 9 degrees. So here I've got 30 degrees advance and it's falling back at about seven and a half degrees at idle. What I like to do is rev the engine up and see where the total advance stops. So how much max advance am I getting on the pulley? I've made a mark on this pulley at about 30 degrees, so I'm just going to take into account where it sits uh, in relation to that 30 degree mark. And with a little bit more advance, I'm managing to get 32 degrees here, with it falling back at idle to about eight to nine degrees. So the next thing to do is to obviously tighten up your distributor clamp and recheck your timing before you disconnect your timing light. And as a final reading, I'm getting 32 degrees full advance, falling back to about eight to nine degrees at idle. So it's time for a test drive. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in the next one.